بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ on behalf of infection prevention and control administration i welcome you all to this presentation which is related to infection prevention and control core components in this flow of presentation primarily we would focus on the step wise approach for practical implementation of ipc core components in the healthcare facilities this presentation is broadly divided into three parts part 1 part 2 and part 3 In part one, we will discuss the World Health Organization core components on infection prevention and control, WHO multi-model improvement strategy. We will take account of situation, our situation, what are the issues and challenges. In part two, we will discuss the stepwise approach for implementation of IPC core components in the perspective of improvement. In part three, we will share with you certain tools and resources which were basically designed to ensure the the uniform uniformity among all the hospitals and to facilitate the implementation process of ipc core components we will also share with you icu model as an example for ipc core components implementation and towards the end we will conclude the presentation by highlighting the most important key points which are really important for the implementation process okay before we move forward Uh, we need to uh, we need to discuss certain points as we all know that infection prevention and cold components are already implemented in the governmental hospitals since many years and hospitals are already reporting uh, cold component self assessment to the regional directorates and from the regional directorates to the general directorate on the quarterly basis but earlier it included only the self evaluation of the cold components but now gdipc has devised a uniform step wise approach which will start with the ipc core competence training followed by monitoring and evaluation basically it's a step to move forward to a more focused and targeted activities with new motivation as we will move further in this presentation you get to know that most of the items are already implemented and most of the activities are already being performed by the infection control practitioners what we need to do is to just readjust and integrate our daily activities so that we can enjoy our work with best time management and of course we should all aim high for the patient safety by involving all the key players all the key stakeholders with the slogan of infection control is everybody's responsibility as we all know it's a team approach and we need to strive hard to achieve this inshallah now we will come to part 1 of this presentation where we will we are going to discuss the who core components on infection prevention and control who released the first guidelines on core components in the year 2008 followed by a comprehensive revision in 2016 and then who released a practical manuals later in to, to 2018 uh, for improving the infection prevention and control at the health facility le levels these practical guidelines are the major reference of our today's presentation also according to who ipc infection prevention and control is a universally relevant component of all health systems and affects the health and safety of the patients staff and visitors Infection prevention and control is a key determinant of the quality of health service delivery to achieve people-centered, integrated, universal health coverage. So these are the um, key points from WHO. WHO core components are a roadmap for how IPC can prevent the harm due to healthcare-associated infections and antimicrobial resistance. Of course, in the hospital, we don't want the patients who are being admitted to our hospitals to acquire any infection from the hospital okay what is the purpose of who guidelines the purpose of who guidelines is simply protecting the patient and healthcare workers life across the world through excellence in infection prevention and control as you can see here it's also reflected from the um, from this image which the slogan and the tagline shows healthcare without avoidable infections so now 
why infection prevention and control is so important for the global health because it occupies a unique position in the future of patient safety and quality of care and it is universally relevant to every healthcare worker and patients at every single health encounter health inter interaction within the healthcare facilities and we must all agree that without effective infection prevention and control it is impossible to achieve quality healthcare delivery and strong health system so how we can achieve this we can achieve this by ensuring the stepwise approach of training monitoring and evaluation of infection prevention and control core components by adopting the world health organization guidelines for improving infection prevention and control at the health healthcare facilities okay now we will move on to the overview of core components what are the core components which are being given by who core components of infection prevention and control refers to the essential activities required to prevent the healthcare associated infections and manage the antimicrobial resistance at the healthcare facility level core components of infection prevention and control programs form a key part of who strategies to prevent the current and the future threats strengthen the health service resilience and help combat antimicrobial resistance so there are eight who core components of infection prevention and control as listed here infection prevention and control programs evidence based guidelines education and training healthcare associated infection surveillance multi model strategies monitoring and audit of ipc practices and feedback workload staffing and bed occupancy built environment materials and equipment for ipc so now we are going to take these uh, eight core components one by one which are ipc programs guidelines education and training surveillance multi model strategies monitoring audit workload staffing bed occupancy and built environment materials and equipment for ipc coming to core component 1 which is infection prevention and core uh, and control programs as per who an ipc program with a dedicated trained ipc team should be in place in each acute healthcare facility for the purpose of preventing his and combating antimicrobial resistance through implementing ipc recommendations ipc dedicated trained team must have clearly defined ipc objectives with measurable outcome indicators and targets which should be set for critical healthcare facility areas and of course as we all know we cannot ensure effective implementation of ipc program unless we have a support from leadership and a good quality microbiology support coming to core component 2 ipc guidelines evidence based guidelines should be developed and implemented for the purpose of reducing hai and amr of course it requires expertise and education and training of relevant healthcare workers on the guideline to ensure effective implementation monitoring of adherence to the guidelines is a key point unless we are going to monitor or audit the performance of the healthcare workers we cannot guarantee the, the effective implementation of the infection prevention and control policies and procedures and of course we need uh, resources for the implementation and the third core component from who IPC education and training. According to WHO, education and training is an essential component and key success factor for effective IPC guideline implementation, contributing to the ultimate prevention of HIs and antimicrobial resistance and provision of high quality health service delivery. The purpose is to develop a skilled and knowledgeable health workforce with basic IPC competencies and as well as providing continuous education for the ipc practitioners with advanced knowledge and implementation skills multiple strategies should be utilized for the ipc education including the best bedside simulation training and interactive sessions to reduce the risk of healthcare associated infections and antimicrobial resistance so infection prevention and control education and training it forms the cornerstone of infection prevention and control within the healthcare facilities coming to 
the core component four, which is healthcare associated surveillance. As per WHO, uh, surveillance should be an essential and a well-defined component of IPC programs and need to be established to identify the most frequent HIs and detect the HI outbreaks, including AMR surveillance. And of course, we need to have the standardized definitions and an appropriate methodology for conducting the surveillance in the hospitals with adequate microbiology laboratory capacity, which can give us the timely feedback of results. And of course, training and expertise is required also to conduct the HAI surveillance in the healthcare facilities. Core component five. Core component five is multi-model strategies. We need to understand the importance of this core component, which is important for the, for the implementation of uh, all the other core components in the hospital. WHO says, according, according to WHO, multimodal thinking means that IPC practitioners do not focus only on the single strategy to change the practices, for example, training and education. The IPCs must involve a range of strat strategies that target different influences of human behavior. For example, monitoring and feedback infrastructure and organizational culture. The use of multimodal strategies supports all aspects of IPC implementation and underpins all the core component guideline recommendation. You will understand the multimodal improvement strategy from this figure. Here you can see WHO multimodal strategy improvement strategy. It's a way to achieve the system change climate and the behavior change that supports IPC progress and ultimately the measurable impact that benefits the patients and healthcare workers. This strategy involves building the right system, teaching the right things, checking the right things, selling the right messages and ultimately living IPC throughout the entire health system. As you can see here, Multimodal improvement strategy consists of five major domains, build it, teach it, check it, sell it, and live it. So WHO multimodal improvement strategy, build, in, build it means a system change. Without a system change, without appropriate infrastructure, infrastructure, without a system component elements to implement the IPC, and to improve the outcome and change behaviors. So without a good system, without the material support, we are unable to achieve our required targets. Then teach it. We have to develop the strategy, how to provide all the needed information and training to the clinical care staff who are actually taking care of the patients who are actually involved in the patient care then we have to check it. Unless and unless we have the concept of accountability, we the concept of monitoring, continuous audit, and the feedback, the things will not go, will not be able to improve as we are expecting. Then sell, sell it. It means that infection prevention and control messages should be shared and communicated with all the healthcare workers within the hospitals as reminders. So we have to sell the right messages. Finally, finally, we have to live the safety climate, the culture of safety, and we need to be the drivers of change to create this environment. So living IPC throughout the entire health system. So again, reinforcing, we need to build the right system, we need to teach the right things. We need to check the right things. We need to sell the right messages and ultimately living the IPC throughout the entire health system. For example, if the, the physicians who are responsible for central line insertion, if they are not, if they do not understand the concept of maintaining the sterile technique during the central line insertion or if, if the center line insertion kits are not available, then we are not able, we, we, we won't be able to prevent the center line associated bloodstream infections in our, in our patients. So it's a, it's a combination. It's uh, an integration of all 
the stakeholders and all the major domains of infection prevention and core, com core components to ensure the implementation process. Coming to core component six, here you can see it's monitoring audit of IPC practices and the feedback. Regular monitoring, audit, and timely feedback of healthcare practices and other indicators according to the IPC standards. This is really important. The main purpose of monitoring, auditing practices, and other indicators and feedback is to support the achievement of behavior or system change to improve the practices and ensure the quality of care with goal of reducing the risk of HAIs and AMR spread as part of the multimodal approach. As you know, that the behavioral change it's it's a long process. It takes takes time. It's a transition phase. So we need to work hard to to bring the behavioral change by continuous education, training, and monitoring of healthcare workers' performance. Then it also includes an assessment of the extent to which the standards are being met. Goals are accomplished activities performed according to the requirements and aspects that may need improvement. So basically to identify the areas of weakness and to work on those to ensure improvement. Then coming to the core component seven, core component seven here, it's related basically to the workload staffing and bed occupancy. According to WHO, healthcare workers staffing levels should be adequately assigned according to the patient workload. Bed occupancy should not exceed the standard capacity of facility one patient per bed with adequate spacing of more than one meter between the patient beds. Overcrowding, as we all know, is, a, is recognized as a threat that can further lead to disease transmission. The last core component is built environment, materials, and equipment for IPC. Patient care activities should be undertaken in a clean and hygienic environment that facilitates practices related to prevention and control of HIIs, as well as antimicrobial resistance. This includes availability of appropriate IPC materials and equipment at the point of care. For example, to ensure the effective uh, practice of five moments of hand hygiene, alcohol-based hand rubs, soap and water should be available at point of care personal protective equipment, urinary catheters, and central line insertion. Now, we, we are going to summarize the core components of infection prevention and control. This is basically, this figure provides a visual presentation of eight core components, how they are interconnecting with each other. These core components, uh, this figure highlights how the guideline recommendation in interconnect with each other. For example, here, if you can see IPC program, the presence of IPC program is a necessary but not a sufficient condition to achieve the safe, high quality healthcare. In addition, an adequate built environment and enabling environment is required which serve, serves as a foundation. For example, we need to have a good infrastructure. We need to have materials and equipment, appropriate bed occupancy, adequate human resources and staffing. And we need to have a So the workload and the staffing level must be appropriately adjusted to ensure the enabling environment for the implementation of infection prevention and control core components. So basically it represents the foundation enabling the implementation of all other core components and achievement of safe practices within the healthcare facilities. These two prerequisites, the IPC program and enabling environment, it's it supports the effective implementation of IPC guidelines, education and training, HAI surveillance, and finally monitoring, audit, and feedback. And as we, as it is, yeah, as it was emphasized earlier, that multi-model strategies, as you can see here in the outer circle, multi-model strategies, in it's it's really important and it's a key determinant to ensure the effective implementation of 
infection prevention and control core components within the healthcare facilities. Okay, now we will take a brief account of our situation with what are some of the issues and the challenges. As we can see, we have a lot of literature available and we had a lot of uh, guidelines, infection prevention and control guidelines, which were released from by, uh, by GDIPC in the past years, infection control guidelines for dental settings, occupational health guidelines, and my mental services guidelines, and uh, infection control guidelines for have um, ASP guidelines, CSSD guidelines, infection control guidelines for the hemodialysis settings, COVID-19 guidelines, MERS-COP guidelines, HEI surveillance guidelines, PPE guidelines. All these guidelines were recently released from GTIPC. And also now we have the IPC core components guidelines. We have a lot of literature available. We have a lot of guidelines available. Then why we are unable to achieve and sustain full IPC implementation? There could be multiple factors, but like what we can uh, come up with uh, inadequate IPC staffing and competency levels, lack of availability of full-time infection control directors within the healthcare facilities, lack of time management, inappropriate division and integration of daily tasks. Shortage of human resource is a very important factor. Lack of motivation and interest of healthcare delivery staff. These are some of the factors which, which you can say these are um, the etiological factors for uh, where, when we are unable to achieve the effective implementation of IPC programs within the healthcare facilities. What are the solutions? We need to develop and implement the multimodal strategies to achieve the behavioral change with administration support for the IPC core components implementation process. With this, we come to part two of our presentation, which is stepwise approach for the practical implementation of IPC core components in the healthcare facilities. These are the uh, few steps which we can take to, to ensure that how we can uh, implement the IPC core components within the healthcare facilities. It starts, as you can see, this, uh, it includes education and training, followed by monitoring, evaluation, feedback, and finally, of course, the, the report submission by the online system. So we need to, first phase, we need to train all the healthcare workers on IPC core component standards. Then through our continuous monitoring activities, we need to, to have a check on, on their performance. And we, followed by the formal evaluation, which is called the IPC core components uh, assessment or the audit, which should be done at the end of each quarter. Then without, appropriate formal feedback to all the stakeholders, we are unable to achieve the required targets. And of course, uh, the, the, the report submission, which is a mandatory requirement by the online system. Now we will talk about all these steps, important steps, following the, the, the technique or the method, methodology of what, why, how, who and when, what, when, what is required? What do we want to achieve? Why do we have to do it? How will we do it? Who is responsible when it will be done? So now we will discuss this one by one. For example, education and training. What are we going to focus on education and training? Education and training of all the healthcare workers must be performed on infection control best practices according to their area of work. This basically, it will cover all the IPC core component standards. Why do we want to train them? To ensure the competency of healthcare workers during the patient care activities by having a skilled, knowledgeable health workforce. 
how can we achieve this target of training and education? In step one, we need to start with the administrative support. We need to send a memo through the administration to all the units and the departments to start with education and training phase of IPC core components, quarterly activities. So here, the administration support is needed to, to support the infection prevention and control activities in the hospital. Then in the second step, we need to obtain the list of all the healthcare workers. As we said earlier, that we have to move now to a more focused and the targeted activities. So we need to train all the healthcare workers within the hospital to obtain the list of all the healthcare workers from the relevant units either HR department or nursing administration, list of doctors, nurses, housekeeping, respiratory therapists, lab technicians, according to the, uh, according to the units. Then divide each category of the staff over four quarters. We, we, have, we, we need to report the, uh, the core component self-evaluation four times per year, once in each quarter. So we need to divide the category of staff over four quarters in order to achieve 100% coverage at the end of year. Divide the units and tasks for IPC core component activities among all the IC practitioners, including the infection control directors. We need to prepare the training agenda, plan and schedule of our IPC training and education activities. Then, Send the training schedule to all the units with the names of the targeted healthcare workers intended to be trained in, in the particular quarter. For example, if you identify certain um, nurses, doctors, they, they must know that in this quarter, you will cover with them all the, the, the core components which are related to their uh, specialty and the, and the nature of their work. Then share the training content and IPC core competence departmental manual with each assigned unit. Use a blended approach, mixed approach for training, including the small group discussions, PPT, PowerPoints, practical sessions, including the simulation and bedside training. Train the same staff as per schedule followed by evolution in month three. When you choose specific healthcare workers in a particular quarter for your training, for example, you know, two nurses, two physicians, one housekeeping or two housekeeping, one RT from any, any unit, for example, in, in uh, ICU or ER, then you must train and focus on those in your, um, during your IPC training and, and education activities. At least two to three from each category should be selected depend, depending on the number of the staff belonging to the different professional categories in each unit so that you can achieve 100% of the coverage at the end of one year. Then next step is to document and keep track of the IPC core components training and evaluation activities of each unit in order to achieve 100% staff coverage at the end of year. Here you can use a training and the competency dashboard, which should be a shared file among all the ICPs and the regional coordinators so that they can track your IPC training activities. So all the tools which, which we are going to share with you, most of them are in the Excel format and each infection control practitioner must be fully responsible for all the activities which are related to their assigned area, area of work. And as it will be a shared file uh, among all the staff, so the infection control directors also, they can monitor and keep track of the activities of infection control team in the hospital. Apart from the, the training and education of the clinical care staff, infection control practitioners, the, the training of the IC team is also really important, the competency building, because you will not be confident enough to provide training to the staff unless you have an in-depth knowledge of what we are, you are going to train and discuss with them. For IC team to have updated IC knowledge and to enhance the IPC core components monitoring skills, at least bi-weekly IC departmental activities must be conducted. Arrange a regular education and training session for presentation by each ICP according to the assigned unit task. 
develop the culture of continuous discussion and education within the within the department we can dedicate 30 to 45 minutes for this activity which should be led by infection control director to have open discussion about the ipc core component standards no need for any any formal uh, presentations it could be only you can you can start uh, opening the guidelines and reading from the guidelines and and to have a discussion regarding all the standards so that all the ic practitioners are aware about the updates for example you can choose two two days like here monday and thursday and you will discuss for example the assigned icp for hemodialysis unit she can or he can discuss the ipc core component standards from the ipc core components guidelines related to hemodialysis uh, unit and it can be completed in multiple session and you'll get to know and you already know that most of the uh, standards are repeated in almost all the units so by by continuous education and training you will build up uh, appropriate skills so that you can train and also conduct uh, monitoring and evaluation of the clinical care staff in the in the respective assigned units who is responsible as we know of course infection control department is primarily responsible to provide the continuous education and training activity training to all healthcare workers according to the job category in in all areas of the hospital with effective utilization of infection control link staff in each areas when it will be done the icps must adhere at least 10 out of 12 weeks for the ipc core components education and planning activities in each quarter dedicate week 1 for ipc core components planning in each quarter and week 12 for evaluation and report submission ensure to cover all targeted healthcare workers selected for training in each quarter as per schedule for example if here you can see the breakup for in each quarter we have 12 weeks in week 1 week 1 would be the plan planning phase for ipc core components where you will work on preparing the schedules obtaining the list of healthcare workers for your assigned areas and prepare the content what you are going to share with them what are you going to teach them etc then in the week 2 to 11 you need to start your ipc core components training monitoring and evaluation process so the the targeted staff which you have selected based on your assignment you you need to have a communication with them you need to share all the training material with them so that they are oriented that in this particular quarter they will receive the training and education related to their uh, specialty and followed by the formal evaluation at the end of each quarter week week 12 would be uh, dedicated to report submission analysis and of course the feedback and the the rewards in the form of certificate etc then next is monitoring what do we have to monitor for example uh, hand hygiene compliance monitoring of ppe practices while dealing with the isolated cases monitoring of adherence to sfp technique and monitoring of environmental cleaning and key measures to prevent the surgical site infections etc observe the staff practices and behaviors and provide on site feedback monitoring and auditing is really important to improve the practices and quality of care with goal of reducing the risk of healthcare associated infections and transmission of antimicrobial resistance and to ensure the implementation of guidelines into practice monitoring helps to identify the areas for improvement how it will be done it will be conducted by regular rounds of assigned units and areas for the ipc core components activities daily rounds weekly rounds depending on the degree of associated risk in the particular areas as in the in the in, in earlier part of the presentation we 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 clarified this that all the activities most of the items are already being implemented and infection control practitioners are already conducting their daily rounds so just to need to readjust and redesign your daily activities 
observe the staff practices and use your infection control authority to identify and rectify the breaches in the practices. Who is responsible? Again, all members of the infection control department, infection control directors would lead all the IPC core competence activities. Infection control director must ensure that all ICPs are well-trained and have good knowledge and skill for monitoring and observing the staff practices. Train infection control link nurses in different units could assist in monitoring process like hand hygiene observations. And it's already, most of the hospital have this, um, the, the, the support from the link, IC link nurses. When monitoring and observation, observation of IC practices, <laughs> as we all know, is a continuous process to ensure strict adherence to the IC practices to ensure the patients, staff, and visitors' safety. Okay, next step is evaluation audit. What are we going to audit? Evaluate periodic evaluation, audit assessment of both effectiveness of the training programs and assessment of the staff knowledge. Whatever you have, the training activities you have conducted in particular quarter, you have to evaluate a formal evaluation at the end of each quarter. Why it must be done? Assessment of the extent to which the standards are being met and goals are accomplished. This is the and this is the reason why the, the evalu formal evaluation is done. So we want to estimate the, the performance and um, of, the, of the unit and also the healthcare workers to identify the areas of improvement and work on, on those in the next phase. How it will be done? Evaluate the unit and performance of each healthcare personnel using IPC core competence checklist designed for each unit. Evaluate, assess the competency of the same staff who had received training in the particular quarter, competency assessment. You, you will train them, you will constantly monitor their performance, and finally, you, you are going to assess them so that they are competent enough to, to implement the infection control measures according to the nature of their work. Keep the evaluation form, the hard version, in the staff personal files as evidence of formal training and competency assessment to be presented to the external audit visitors from MOI, Sibahi, or JCI if, when needed. Based on the results of evaluation and uh, the IPC core component scoring, which, which can be obtained uh, from the online system, acknowledge the performance of the units and the healthcare workers by selecting the best unit and the best healthcare workers from each category in each quarter. Who, who is responsible, who will be doing all this? All members of infection control department to evaluate assigned units for the IPC core competence activities as per division of task. Infection control directors would lead all the IPC core competence activities and ensure all units are visited as per schedule. An infection control director will um, make sure that all the infection control practitioners, they are also updating their uh, um, the dashboard which are relating to the training and uh, um, evaluation competency of um, the particular healthcare workers. When it will be done, IPC core competence audit evaluation will be conducted for each unit in week 11 or 12 of each quarter after successful completion of infection prevention and control core competence training and monitoring for each unit by the assigned staff, assigned infection control practitioner. Now coming to the next uh, step, which is feedback. Feedback is really important in improving the practices and changing the behaviors. So what is required? Provide formal, informal feedback performance to the units and healthcare workers uh, on the areas of improvement and increase compliance to the infection control uh, measures, which will result in, in increased compliance to the infection control measures. 
why it must be done. Performance feedback is an important and key factor in quality improvement process. Monitoring, audit, and feedback are an important tool for convincing the healthcare workers and other stakeholders that there is a problem and that the solution chosen, chosen is the right one. So it, all this must take place in a blame-free manner to promote a positive culture within the hospital settings. So infection control team must convey the feedback in a polite, gentle manner so that the, the, the clinical care staff, they are able to, to respond and to make sure that they, they really improve uh, their, their performance in the next uh, quarter. How it will be done, send formal feedback to the units and healthcare workers evaluated in particular quarter. You can use official templates. Share IPC core confidence score and result of competency with the healthcare workers. Consider retraining of the staff if the, if the score is below the required, at least 80% must be the, um, the score. Recognize the best performance. Share, appreciate the performance by giving the certificates of appreciation from the top administration could be one day salary or could be days off based on their performance. Use official letters of appreciation for best unit performance, best staff performance in each quarter. You can also identify the IPC core components champions in each quarter according to the uh, areas. Post the certificates on the IC bulletin boards to be easily seen and appreciated by all other employees in the hospital. Who will be doing all this infection control team will be responsible to prepare the feedback document. All certificates of appreciation must be signed by the hospital director using the official template. When it will be done at the end of each quarter after online submission of IPC core components report. IPC core components uh, for report submission will be through the online system at the end of each quarter and be submitted to GDIPC make sure all domains are complete. Okay, now we come to part three of our presentation, which is uh, related to the tools and resources. This is the list. We have the infection prevention and control uh, core components checklist for the audit rounds for each of the 26 units. Template of letter from administration to all the units for implementation of IPC core components. Template for IPC core components training plan is an Excel file. Template for proposed division of IC practitioners task. Also, this is an Excel file. Template for IPC core components training and competency dashboard, Excel file. Template for IPC core components, core components evaluation audit visit schedule, which should be sent to all the units on the quarterly basis. Template for IPC core components audit feedback to the units after you have uh, passed through the evaluation phase, then you need to send the formal feedback to the, uh, to the, to the units as we discussed. Template for performance feedback on the IPC core components for the staff. A template for certificate, the certificate of appreciation for best unit performance in IPC core components uh, quarterly, certificate of appreciation for best staff perform performance, and certificate for appreciation for best hospital performance. It will be, um, it will be of course um, from the regional directorate based on the on the performance of the hospitals in each quarter. This is uh, an example for. Uh, a letter, a formal letter. It could be, you can modify this, but it must be circulated to all the units through the hospital director for implementation of infection prevention and control com core components within the healthcare facility so that the units and the staff, healthcare workers, they are oriented that infection prevention and control activities will, will be conducted in each quarter in their respective areas. Then this is an example of infection control department because 
we, 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 we said that we will start with the planning phase. So planning phase starts with the division of tasks. So based on the number of the infection control practitioners who are working in, in the department, this is basically the division um, of one in where uh, in a hospital where there is one infection control director and three infection control practitioners are working. And we know on an average, the IC, IPC core components um, uh, guidelines, they are basically, they are divided into uh, 26 units. The total units are 26, which are to be um, trained, monitored, and evaluated. But on an average, not all the units are available in all the hospitals. On an average, around 18 to 20 units are available in most of the hospitals. So if we have one IC director and three ICP, you can divide the areas. Of course, the senior ICPs would, um, would take the critical care units, and the, the junior ICPs they can uh, they can share their work by by visiting the, the the support services in the initial quarters. But later on, with continuous uh, training, monitoring, um, experience, they can they can also uh, be eligible to 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 train, monitor, and audit the critical care units maybe in the later half, in the later quarters. So. First thing, the, uh, division of tasks. Also, it is really important for the infection control practitioners to, uh, to have the daily division of their activities. Each infection control practitioner must divide their time according to the hours. For example, on uh, we, we know that the daily shift starts from 7.30 to till 4.30 in a hospital. So you can divide on, these are the tasks which are on, on an average, most of the healthcare workers, they have to perform certain uh, common tasks in the hospital. For example, if they can divide their tasks 7.30 to 9 a.m., has in reports, results, e emails, et cetera. 9 to, 9 to 10 a.m. and also 10 to 11 a.m., they will be responsible for conducting their daily rounds, which are, which are the mandatory rounds. For the, uh, for the critical care units and other important areas in the hospitals. Then from 11 to 12 a.m., for example, if they need to attend any meeting, if there is any new staff orientation, any activity related to Bixel or any other miscellaneous tasks they can perform in this particular hour. Then we have 12 to one, maybe a lunch and prayer break. Then each day, you have to choose one hour according to your convenience where you are going to formally conduct the IPC core components training and monitoring uh, activities apart from your daily rounds. So this is your formal one hour each day for your IPC core components training and education activities, which you have to complete in each quarter for your assigned areas. Then next, for example, you can dedicate the next hour for HSN, HIS surveillance data entry or any other data entry. And from 3 to 4.30, maybe you can dedicate some time for departmental meetings, IPC standard discussion, responding to various issues, queries. So this is just, just uh, an, uh, an idea. You can modify this. And the idea behind this is that we need to we need to make the best use of our time so that we can complete our tasks and uh, at the end we can also uh, um, in, enjoy our work and ensure the effective implementation of our infection prevention and control programs in the hospital. As uh, said earlier, infection control practitioners they must need to update the knowledge, they have to acquire the skills so that, so that they are confident enough to train the staff who are working in the assigned units. For example, they could choose, you can choose um, one day or two days in a week. If you choose one day in a week, the duration of, of discussion could be one hour, but if you choose two days, maybe it can be reduced to 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Either you can you can have a discussion 
through the through the guidelines no need for the formal presentations just read out and discuss among yourselves you can go topic by topic or you can you can discuss according to the units for example dental unit hemodialysis unit uh, er icu etc then uh, this is the ipc implementation for example quarter 3 this is the uh, the planning schedule for example week 1 you will consider only on the planning and the preparation for the ipc core competence training monitoring and evaluation how you are going to plan your 12 weeks so week 1 you are not going to perform any formal training uh, and monitoring activities related to ipc core competence you just need to prepare uh, yourself strengthen your knowledge increase your knowledge and then so that you are able to deliver it in a perfect way so let's suppose week 2 week 3 week 4 week 5 week 6 and so on if icp has assigned areas for example er icu dental unit kitchen and mortuary this is her uh, assigned areas for a particular quarter so as we dis discussed early in the earlier slide that she or he has to dedicate one hour for formal ipc training and education activities which will start from week 2 of each quarter so let's suppose on sunday she can visit the er to conduct the training for the particular staff who who was chosen to be trained in that particular quarter then monday could be icu tuesday could be dental unit wednesday could be kitchen thursday mortuary and Uh, the, the saturday and friday are exempted where you can plan other other activities uh, according to your uh, uh, workload then this is the template for ipc core competence training plan for example if you are assigned intensive care unit so you need to know who i'm going to train what training i'm going to provide and how it will be done so if you see here these are all the standards for the in intensive care unit icu which must be and which must be um, covered by the assigned health uh, infection control practitioner and of course not all the standards are applicable for all the uh, healthcare professionals like for example the 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 training needs of nurses the training needs of uh, physicians housekeeping staff rts will be different from each other so based on the standards you need to design and develop uh, a schedule and uh, a format content which you are going to do to, to share with them as you can see here this uh, training plan it's uh, it's not just for icu it uh, consists of all the units if you can see here down neonatal icu pediatric icu burn unit er or oncology delivery room and so on so when it will be a shared file each icp will be responsible for uh, for activities related to her unit only but of course the ic directors as it will be a shared file they can keep track of all the activities here if you can see as we said once we pass through the planning phase we need to uh, obtain the list of healthcare workers who are working in the critical care units or any other unit which we which we have to evaluate which is being assigned for us for, for example here if you can see this is the, the column one job category doctors nurses housekeeping staff respiratory therapists name of the healthcare workers you need to have a list of the healthcare workers because you have to conduct the targeted uh, training uh, and evaluation activities here if you can see you need to write down of course this is also a shared file <clears throat> here you need to have the names of the doctors nurses housekeeping respiratory therapists whatever uh, professional category uh, is available then you have it's being divided into quarters quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 it and two major components ipc core competence training followed by evaluation competency training competency in each quarter so that by the end of each year you should achieve at least um of course 100% uh, training coverage for each assigned area <coughs> 
you can see here this is also um, the same uh, shade but it's different here the the area is different er similarly it's uh, htu or oncology as i told you earlier then this is the infection control core components or it visit schedule so each icp who is assigned for particular units he or she need to send the date of formal evaluation to the units so the units and the staff they are oriented they are aware that on this particular date icp assigned icp she will come to our unit and she is going to evaluate us on the infection prevention and control uh, core components standards this is the uh, ipc core competence planning and evaluation tracker which should be filled by uh, the icps who are uh, assigned for the particular area and of course based on the evaluation then feedback of the unit performance should be given to the to the units uh, in the form of cumulative score then this is the cumulative score for the ipc core competence competency and feedback for the staff this is an example of certificate of appreciation best unit performance if you identify a best healthcare worker staff and you you have to um uh, appreciate its performance by uh, calling them uh, ipc core competence champions then the uh, based on the performance of the hospitals the regional infection control director can issue the best hospital performance certificate and of course uh, to to recognize the the efforts of infection control practitioner the infection control director through the hospital director they can also choose the best icp who really worked hard in that particular quarter finally uh, we as we said we will just quickly share with you the icu model as an example for the ipc core competence implementation so how we can proceed we need to proceed with obtaining the updated list of staff from the department uh, itself or the nursing administration or the hr prepare the training schedule and content to be delivered according to the professional category doctors nurses housekeeping specify the healthcare workers to be trained and evaluated on ipc core competence in the particular quarter share all the training material relevant to the ipc core competence and agenda for ipc core competence activities this as we we told you earlier that in uh, infection prevention and control core competence we have Uh, the manuals also uh, which are derived from from the major manual for each uh, area for example intensive care unit as you can see here er for example cssd so when you uh, identify certain healthcare worker uh, in a particular quarter you need to share with them all the training material and discuss with them and for for ease of communication you, you need to maybe you can create a whatsapp group with them so that uh, for quick communication and ease of uh, communication process if you can see here this is an example of ipc core components training and competency schedule for example here as we told it's a targeted focused activity so you have to prepare a planner here for example na name of the health healthcare worker and his or her professional category it was you mentioned on the template then the first column shows the date of uh, the training activity the the topic or the content which you are going to cover and the status done not done in this if you can see here and we highlighted earlier that most of the uh, activities are already being performed for example let's suppose if we see here this is introduction to the policies and procedure how they are going to access the policies and procedures and certain infection control uh, forms then you have to orient them about this hand hygiene ppe is also part of pixel so any activity any content which is related to pixel you can skip it because it's already being communicated already being uh, the training was already conducted as part of pixel training so of course you can you can omit that 
Then, uh, for example, aspiric technique, care bundles, which are really important for the uh, for the critical care unit, central line insertion and maintenance bundles, and uh, urinary catheter insertion and maintenance bundles, ventilator care bundles, MTRO care bundles. Again, transmission based precautions, uh, also part of Pixel, IC precautions in special situations, COVID and MERS, disinfection of patient care equipment. And these are the content which is also part of Excel. So, so you need to define the content and this will be by each ICP who, or who is assigned for the particular area. For example, someone who is assigned for CSST or the dietary services or the endoscopy unit, you need to develop your own content based on the area, of course. And then in each quarter, you need whatever you cover, you have to mention the studies done, not done. And the assign the chosen healthcare workers, if doctor, nurse, or housekeeping, they must be aware that then after the training, there will be a, a formal activity in the form of IPC core competence evaluation competency, which will be conducted by the ICP on the particular date so that they are aware and they are prepared to, uh, to undergo this evaluation process. Similarly, if you can see here, this is another uh, example here, the professional category is doctor. And uh, similarly, you, you, you need to design and um, uh, to, to revise the, the, the contents because as we said, the training needs and the, the nature of the work differs from each professional category. Okay, here if you can see, this is the same file, um, Excel file. Now it's uh, like if the activities are being done, for example, if you in quarter one, if you train, uh, if you focus on one doctor, two nurses, one housekeeping and one respiratory therapist, in one quarter, you need to highlight it, that the training was being done with the name of the doctor, not doctor one. It will be by, by the name of particular doctor or the nurse. Similarly, then you will go on quarter two because uh, the same ICP will follow for quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And then by the end of each, by the end of final quarter, the end of year, this must be, you must complete the training for all the healthcare workers who are working in a particular assigned unit, for example, here. So first of all, you need to provide them the training followed by monitoring and continuous monitoring and the formal evaluation in the form of IPC core components audit. Then, as we said, this was a tracker and it's a shared file and it must be filled by all the assigned healthcare workers for their particular areas. For example, if you can see here, IPC training and education, percentage of coverage. Here, this is for the staff. 30% of the staff were trained in the quarter one and the scoring 85% the ICU scored for example 85% in quarter one similarly in quarter two the percentage of coverage for training and education increased from 30% to 60% then 80% and then 100% in quarter four here if you can see IPC core confidence score for ICU 85% 80% 90% 85%. So similarly, each ICP who is assigned for a particular area, she must fill this tracker. For example, here, if we focus here, we have a grand total at the end of each quarter. Cumulative score, for example, if you take the average, then at the end, you, you can get that in quarter one, this much, this much percentage of the healthcare workers working in all the units have received uh, the training and education on IPC core components. And the average, it will give you, this gives you the individual score for each unit and at the end, you can have a grand total for all the units. So at the end of each quarter, you can also present this, these statistics in your infection control committee meetings as well. This will really give you an, uh, an, um, a good track of your training and education activities along with 
competency and scoring for each unit. And of course, uh, the feedback, as we told you, it's the same because we are presenting you the, the ICU model to intensive care unit, the date of evaluation 39, 2021, for example, this is the subjective feedback of unit performance in infection prevention and control core competence, IPC core competence, and the cumulative score obtained was 80%. Similarly, you have to let's suppose if the uh, if the, the evaluation of evaluation was done for a physician, uh, so you need to address with uh, with with the name, date of evaluation, and the score achieved. And of course, based on 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 the scoring, let's suppose if if it's sixty percent, then you, then this particular healthcare professional must be retrained and reevaluated in the future quarters. Now, with this, we come to the conclusion of this presentation. As we all know, leadership support and commitment is the key driving force for effective implementation of IPC core components within the healthcare facilities. Continuous education and training is extremely important to have a skilled and competent health workforce for the provision of quality health care. Multi-model strategy, as we emphasized a lot on this during the presentation, is critical for the implementation of IPC programs and the practices. It is the way to achieve system change, climate, and the behavior change that supports the ICP progress and ultimately the measurable impact that will benefit the patients and healthcare workers. With this, we come to the end of presentation. Hope uh, it was uh, clear to all of you. If you have any questions, any queries, any suggestions, feedback, you are most welcome to share with us via any communication channels. And we thank you and wish you good luck.